What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Americans were scared, though. I guess nearly 200 dead, 14,000 who were sick, millions, as you witnessed, who are scared right now. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Go ahead. I think it's a very nasty question, and I think it's a very bad signal that you're putting out to the American people. The American people are looking for answers, and they're looking for hope. And you're doing sensationalism. And uh, the same with NBC and Comcast. So I don't call it. I don't call it Comcast. I call it Comcast. Let me just ask for whom you work. Let me just say something. That's really bad reporting. And you ought to get back to reporting instead of sensationalism. Let's see if it works. It might and it might not. I happen to feel good about it, but who knows? I've been right a lot. Let's see what happens, John. Can I get back to the science and the logistics here? You're going to be ashamed of yourself. I said the other day you compare yourself, you see yourself as a wartime president right now, leading the country through this pandemic that we're experiencing. Do you really think, you know, going off on Peter, going off on a network is appropriate when the country is going through something like I this? I do, because I think uh, Peter is, uh, you know, I've dealt with Peter for a long time. And I think Peter is uh, not a good journalist when it comes to fairness message to the country. Oh, I think it's a good message, because I think that the country has to understand that there is indeed, whether we like it or not, and some of the people in this room won't like it, uh, there's a lot of really great news and great journalism, and there's a lot of fake news out there. And I hear it all, and I see it all, and I understand it all, because I'm in the midst of it. So when somebody writes a story or does a story on television, and I know it's false, I know it's fake, and when they say they have 15 sources have said, and I know there's no sources, there's no sources, they're just making it up. Uh, I know that, and I call Peter, I call Peter out, but I call other people out too. And you know, this is a time to come together, but coming together is much harder when we have dishonest journalists. It's a very important profession that you're in. It's a profession that I think is incredible. I cherish it. But when people are dishonest, they truly do hurt our country. Yeah. In TV terms, we call this a softball. I was trying to provide the president an opportunity to reassure the millions of Americans, members of my own family and my neighbors in my community, and plenty of people sitting at home right now. This was his opportunity to do that, to provide a sort of positive or uplifting, uplifting message. Instead, you saw the president's answer to that question right now. But it really does go to one of the fundamental concerns. Americans are looking for a sense of confidence in their leaders at this moment, as many of them are glued to their TVs or stuck behind closed doors in their homes, surrounded only by loved ones right now. But I think it does sort of reveal a frustration, perhaps an anxiety about his own political, political prospects, and about a situation that's hard to keep in control, as we witness it continue to spiral at this time. Andrea, the bottom line is this is a president whose experiences in life are very different than most Americans um, across this country right now. Not a person who likely worries about finances or had, not a person who in the course of his life is worried about his future, not a person who's worried about where he'll find a paycheck for his bills or for his rent. And as evidenced by the president suggesting that an opportunity to provide for Americans some reassurance about how they should feel right now, the president extended instead took it out on me. I sat in that room for just shy of 10 years. It was a perfectly valid question. And what the president did to Peter Alexander is reprehensible. The American people are looking for answers. They do want hope. They do want support, Mr. President. That was a very fair question. Our Caitlin Collins is in the briefing room right now. She was there for that contentious briefing. Caitlin, this is a Trump trademark. This is a Trump trademark. It was striking that this came, this, this forgive me, bullshit attack on fake news came just moments after the Secretary of State said the American people need to be careful about where they get their information and go to sources they can trust. I get there are at times disagreements. There are at times contention between politicians and reporters. That was a 100% legitimate question with no hype, no shade, no bias. He just wanted to attack.